This can massively disempower you or people around you if you do this, and it has to change. Driven Mofos, welcome back to another episode of The Underestimated Entrepreneur. Well, this week I am in Indonesia or Bali. I'm just sitting here chilling by the pool. Got old mate working out there. He's sweeping the grass. <laughs> ah, he's loving it, but he's getting all the leaves off of the grass. Man, I love this place. Anyway, I travel to Bali quite a bit. Jess and I used to come here a couple of times a year. I love working from over here, but anyway, what I wanna talk about is something that really I think is important in relationships and people around you. Now, this morning it was interesting because we just got off of a team meeting. We had a team meeting this morning like we do all the time. So normally the team meeting I think is at like 9.30 or 10 o'clock or something, Adelaide time. 7.30 a.m. because we've kept the team on their time zones and stuff like that. So we're up at 7.30 this morning to have this meeting when I got my coffee and did my workout and all that sort of stuff. What happened was Jess said, you've got to get this podcast done for today for the team. And I went, oh yeah, shit, I better get that done. Now, because we've got other stuff that's already booked, I've just jumped on here to do this. But what I noticed was that she spent more time reminding me of the stuff that I have to do versus saying, hey, look, can I get this done? Is there anything that you need help with? Now, something that's really important as a leader is that as a leader, we don't need to do shit for other people, but what we need to do is we need to be able to lead them. And what I wanted to talk about is that how often do you catch yourself talking to people or telling them about problems or telling them that they need to do things versus offering to help them? So you might need to remind them, hey, I need this done by the end of the day. But instead of saying, here's all the reasons why I need it done, sit there and say, hey, look, I need it done by the end of today. Is there anything that I can help with or any resources that I can help with? Or is there something that I can take off of your plate? Now, in an intimate relationship, this is really important because there are a lot of people that I see who, and I used to do this as well, where you will criticize your partner, judge your partner, tell them all the things that they're not doing, but you don't realize how much shit is actually on their plate. If you're in an intimate relationship and you've got a husband or a wife and you've got kids and things like that, if you actually stop and think about their day, there's probably a lot of shit that they have going on. And when they're not actively taking action, they're probably thinking about taking action or thinking about stuff that they have to do. So by sitting there and saying to them, hey, I need this done, and then giving them a big talk about why you need it done or why they're not doing things or why you're frustrated or why you're upset, just stopping and going, you know what, there's probably a whole bunch of shit that they have that is on their plate at the moment. If they're not taking action or they're not doing something, there's probably a logical reason as to why. Now, if you need it done sooner rather than later, it's better off to just ask them or say, hey, look, can I get that thing done by the end of today? Or hey, have you done that yet? And then when they get stressed out, take that away from them by saying, or take the stress away from them by saying something along the lines of like, hey, I need this done by the end of tonight. Or hey, I know dinner's not ready yet. Is there anything that I can help with or whatever? And just remind them, but remind them that you're there to help them as well. Now with the team, I'm not gonna do their work. But what it's saying is like, if there's anything else that you have on your plate that you need a hand with, let me know and I can delegate it off or maybe we can change some things around or maybe we can reprioritize or something like that. And I know this happens sometimes in my relationship with Jess where this comes up where I will do it with her and she does it with me where she'll say, hey, I need this done when I'm right in the middle of something. Now, I will do it the other way around where Jess is in the middle of doing something like she might be doing strategic planning or something to go, hey, have you done this yet? Hey, what's for dinner or whatever? And then all it does is it puts pressure on her because I didn't ask the one simple question, which is, is there anything that I can do to help? Is there anything that I can take off your plate? Like, hey, I've noticed that this hasn't got done. Is there anything that I can do to take off your plate? You're obviously busy. And give them the benefit of the doubt that they probably have a lot of shit on and maybe they've let it slip or maybe they're just overwhelmed. You know, like I notice sometimes it happens with me where Jess will come to me and say, hey, you're just sitting around doing fuck all, but I'm not doing fuck all. It's just that there is a lot of shit on my plate at the moment and I'm overwhelmed mentally and I'm just, I need some space to think through it. But all she's done is she's come in, put more shit on my plate, made me feel more frustrated and it's interrupted my thought process, which then just pisses me off even more. So we've been talking about this a lot lately, hence why I wanna talk about it because hopefully I can help you with your team or help you in your relationship. Is that when you stop and think about it, like if you look at the patterns of behavior of your partner, I know that Jess is an extremely busy person. She doesn't normally sit around and do fuck all. Now, I'm an extremely busy person. I don't sit around and do fuck all. I never do. There's always something going on in my head or I'm thinking through something or I'm thinking about sales or marketing or branding or relationships or, you know, health or something like there's always something going on. I'm not just sitting there stagnant. So if I am sitting around, it's either I'm overwhelmed, I'm either tired, maybe I'm burnt out, maybe there's something else going on. 
and versus coming in and criticizing, which is what we used to do in our relationship, which caused a lot of problems, stopping and thinking, well, hang on, why are they acting like this? What's going on with them? Normally they're driven. Are they tired? Are they overwhelmed? Is there something going on? And then asking the question like, hey, you know, I've just noticed you've been chilling out. Like, is everything okay? Is there anything going on? Is there something that I can help with? And by asking those questions, you open up your partner or you open up people around you to talk about what's going on. And they might just need to prioritize more effectively. You know, my team does this quite a bit where I notice that they're bouncing around between projects and I say, hey, look, just checking in, like, what's the number one most important thing that you're doing today? And then what do you need a hand with? And what it can do is it can put them on the right path really, really quickly. Anyway, I just wanted to do this quick little podcast this morning because it was just something that came up. Just wanted to share. Hopefully it will help you really think about the patterns of behavior within people around you. Like if your partner is legitimately fucking lazy and doesn't do anything, then that probably has to change. But if there's someone who has a lot of stuff going on and they normally have stuff going on and then maybe they're letting things slip, there's probably another reason to it. You know, if you have a team of people who have things that they're doing, yet they're not doing the right projects or the right work, you've got to ask yourself why. Is there a lack of prioritization? Is there a lack of clarity? Do they not have clarity on their structure or their key strategic pillars? I go over a lot of this stuff in Thrive Time because unless you've got priorities with your team, which come from key strategic pillars, which there should be four or maybe three to five max in your whole company, which drive the company for at least a couple of years, unless you've got those key strategic pillars and then 90 day OKRs or 90 day goals, it's hard for them to make decisions around what they should be doing. And so I'm always driving our team back to those things. Now, if they're still not doing it, there's something else going on. They might have something that's going on at home. They might have something that they're just not clear on. Maybe they're overwhelmed. Maybe they need to learn something and just don't know how to ask. It all depends. But you've got to get feedback originally and, and sort of put together data first about that individual. And then from there, you can start to make a decision as to how you help them or how you drive their behaviors. But great leadership comes from not just telling people what to do. It's actually helping people to feel safe, to feel comfortable, to feel like they're achieving. I know that winners keep winning and losers always lose. So if my team get into a losing mentality where they just feel like things aren't working, then my job is to get them and remind them that we're all winners and we keep winning. That's great leadership. A lot of business owners that I come across, they will remind their team of how fucking useless they are, how shit they are, how worthless they are, how undervalued they are, and they wonder why their staff don't perform. But it's normally shit leadership leads to shit performance from a team. And that's the leader's job, right? That's why it takes a lot of responsibility and why most people actually aren't good leaders. Because everybody wants to lead, they just don't have the courage to lead. They don't have the courage to make the tough decisions. They don't have the courage to say yes to certain things and no to other things, which is why I know I get on the phones every week or in my DMs with business owners and they wonder why their business fucking sucks and they ask for help and then I give them the price and they're like, oh, I need to go discuss it with my partner or I need to go and ask somebody else or you know, I need to sit here and think about it. And I know that they're not players, they're not real people in the game of business because real business people are decisive. They say, look, give me two weeks, I gotta go discuss this with my team, we'll put together a strategic plan. If it follows the alignment of where we're going, then we can make a decision on it. it's gonna take two weeks. But they're very decisive, they make decisions and they'll tell you what is going on. Whereas when people say I need to think about it, they're not thinking about anything, they're just mentally masturbating because that's a pattern of behavior that they have and they keep putting shit off because they're indecisive. That's poor leadership. Poor leaders don't have to sit around and think about shit, they already know where they're going, they know how to drop the hammer because they have good strategic plan, they know their values, they know whether things are gonna work for them or not work for them. You know, that's the difference between good leadership. They already have identified the problems that are in front of them and then they're now working on them to unblock them versus poor business owners sit there and they're surrounded by problems, don't know what to do, they're overwhelmed, they're afraid of spending money, they're afraid of doing things and so they just get stressed out and overwhelmed. But that can be the same with people in their daily lives as well. Like if you don't know where you're going and you don't have a clear plan for your life, like a clear success map, which is what I teach in my Thrive Time event, it's gonna be hard for you to make lifestyle decisions. Now, if you're in an intimate relationship and your partner doesn't know where they wanna go and you don't know where you wanna go and you both don't have a clear success map, it makes the relationship hard. So strategy plus mindset equals success. Now, if you don't have clarity, which is another framework that I use, so the Mojo framework for success is clarity times standards plus environment equals results. So what does that mean? Clarity is the most important thing. If you don't have clarity on where you're going and your partner doesn't have clarity on where they're going, and then you don't have clarity on how to move forward as a couple, then your intimate relationship's gonna suffer. If you're a business owner and you don't have clarity on where the business is going, then you can't identify what problems are ahead, 
Therefore, you're gonna be in reaction mode all the time. You're gonna be drowning in problems every day because you haven't identified what roadblocks you need to unblock before the rest of the team get there. And the business owner should be working on those roadblocks before the team even know that they're a problem. That's good business leadership. So if you have a look and you read books by people like Jack Walsh, who used to run GE, which were one of the most profitable companies on the planet back you know, in the 2000s, I think. If you go back and read his books about General Electric, he would be thinking 40, 50, 60 years in the future. He would be thinking about where General Electric was gonna be in the future. He didn't think about where it was today. He wasn't dealing with daily problems. He was dealing with future problems and changes in the economy, changes in technology, changes in staffing, changing in policy. That's how he thinks. That's a big business owner. Small business owners are just drowning in fucking problems and very rarely do they think ahead of the day. They have maybe a goal of the future, but that's about it. Like they might have, well, I wanna be a business owner and I wanna make money and I wanna be able to travel or whatever, but there's no actual proper plan. And so that causes problems. This really comes down to how you manage people and how you work with people through their challenges and through their problems versus criticizing them, judging them, ask if they need help. Ask if there's something going on, especially if their patterns of behavior previously have demonstrated that they are normally driven and that they're not lazy people. If they're lazy, you know if they're lazy because they're always fucking lazy. But if they're driven and now they're being lazy, there's something else going on. So go and ask them. Ask them the questions. Ask them if they need help. Anyway, Driven Mofos, have a great day. Keep kicking ass. Communicate well. Know your direction. Know where you're going. Clarity is essential. Anyway, have a great day and I look forward to you joining me back here once again on the next episode of The Underestimated Entrepreneur. Most people waste their life and I just don't want you to be one of them.